Alright, today's video is all about the joystick controller. Uh, the first thing I want to go over are the different ways of connecting this controller. As you can see here on the back of the unit, there's a couple options. We've got a power port, an RS-232 port, the three connected monitors there is an Ethernet cable port. And we've got an RS-422 and RS-45 bus. Mainly you'll use those for older systems. Uh, basically you would already have to have a PTZ that uses that type of connection. Uh, so if you do have one of those PTZs, then, then give us a call and we'll be happy to, to run you through the setup. But the video here is just going to go over the most common connection, which is this uh, Ethernet port connection here. So I'm going to go ahead and get one Ethernet cable connected to my router, the same router that the DVR is connected to. And I'm going to power this joystick on and run you through the setup. So while it's booting up, I'm just going to go over the default password. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that this joystick is password protected so that people can't use it without permission. Uh, the manual that it comes with briefly goes over it in very small, tiny writing. The default password is 6 eights, so you'll just basically press the number 8 six times and then press enter to log in. But you'll be able to see that in action here once we got it turned on and I'll log in. So we want to go to setup first so we can set the joystick up on the network and make sure that it's ready to go before we try to use it. So go to setup and then we'll have to put in that password which is 6 eights. Then from here you want to select menu settings, the second option, and then system, the first one in the next list. The first thing we'll do is adjust the date and time. It's very important to have the correct date and time. Uh, as soon as you get that set up, you know, you can move on to the next thing. But it's definitely not something you want to ignore. Sometimes there's some big issues that come up from the date and time not being correct. So today is the 28th of the 12th month, and it is 334, so the date and time is already correct. If you need to change it, you just press this up and down to switch between the different options, and then you just punch in the different number there. So if you want it to be 7 or 2 or whatever you want it to be. For us, it's 12 since it's December. All right, and then you want to go to network, which is the next step down. So if you're in time, just hit escape once and then go down to network. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that DHCP is set to on. What this will do is this will set the joystick up on the network with an address automatically so that you don't have to assign one to it. And it will say successful when you press enter, showing you that it saved those changes. Now go ahead and hit escape twice. Go back into menu settings and select zone. What you want to do here is each DVR is assigned a zone. So if you have eight PTZ cameras connected to one DVR, you're still only going to set up one zone. You're just going to switch between the cameras in that zone. So for now, we've got one zone because we have one DVR. We're just going to call it zone number one. You can put whatever you want for the name here. You just backspace by pressing this joystick in the left-hand direction. If you just start pressing the keys, it's going to bring up numbers. So you have to hit the shift key, and that will change it to the old school text type that was on cell phones back in the day. So if you want to put test, you'll have to hit 8, then 3 twice, and then the number, uh, I think it's the number 7 four times, and then another T here. So that's how you do names there. For the type, you want to make sure it's set to DVR. There are some other options here, single device, device monitor, NVR, matrix. Uh, matrix is if you have those green cables on the back connected or if you have it connected any other way than through the network. But since ours is connected through the network, we're just going to select DVR. All right, and then the link, these are just the, the connections on the back. There is a, four, uh, there is a, two, a 485, a 232, and then this Ethernet port on the back to connect with. So we just want to select Net to indicate we want to use the Ethernet port. And then scroll down to the next option here. As you can see on this page, we want to program it with a zone with the IP address of the DVR so that we can control it from here. So if you look on the upper left hand corner, in this window we've got our DVR pulled up with one of the cameras. Uh, and in that upper left hand corner it shows the IP address. So that's the IP address of the DVR and that's what we want to program into the zone here.
and then the port is 37777. Depending on your DVR, you may use a different port there. If you're not sure, just give us a call. We'll be happy to tell you really quick which port that your system uses for that instead of this one. But if you have an Elite IP or HDCVI unit, then this is the port that you're going to use. Step is the speed. So the higher the number there, the faster it's going to control it. I usually just recommend leaving it at 8. It seems to be pretty responsive. Then if you scroll down to the final page here, we can't really change the rule. There's only one rule, so go ahead and leave that. You just want to make sure that the username and password is correct for the DVR you're connecting to. So we've left ours as the default value, so admin is username and admin is a password. If you've added a new user or changed your password, you'll need to make sure that the username and password here reflect that so you can log into the unit. But once all those settings are done, press enter and it'll save them. Now once they've been saved, we can escape and go back to the very first screen here. Oops, I went too far. Where we've got zone control or menu settings. Now that it's set up, we can control it. So we want to select zone control. And then we want to put in zone number one, which is the one that we just created. And then hit enter. Now if it says connection failed or anything along those lines, then you'll probably need to reevaluate your settings. It could be that the IP address isn't valid or it needs to be changed. There could be a lot of variables in that. So if you're having too much problems with the joystick, just give us a call and we can run you through those as well. But as far as this unit is concerned, it connected just fine. So it brought us to the next screen. And it just shows us the information on the screen. If we want to start using a PTZ camera, we'll have to check the channel that it's assigned to. So if we look at the DVR, it shows that that PTZ is assigned to channel 1. So we want to press 1 and then PTZ. That'll basically just bring up the controls for this one PTZ camera. If you had a PTZ assigned to channel 2, you would hit escape, then hit 2 PTZ to control that one. But we've only got the one, so I'm going to go back. And then once you're on this screen, you just use the left, right, up, and down to move it. It's all pretty self-explanatory here. There's a zoom in and a zoom out option. Uh, there's also a, a focus and iris, so if your camera has manual adjustments for that, you can use this for that as well. Uh, the options over here for preset, scan, pan, and tour, it's recommended that you use these options just to start these tours and presets. If you use the DVR to assign a preset or set up the tour, it's usually a lot more responsive and it's a lot easier to set the tour up. Um, and, and so we recommend that if you're going to do advanced features like that, you just use the options on the DVR for that. If you don't have a DVR, then you're setting this up in a different way anyway. So this is mainly if you have a DVR. Other than that, if you want to go back, just hit escape. That'll bring you back to this screen here. And, and that's all you have to do if you're trying to control a PTZ camera through your DVR. Um, we'll probably do another video for just the PTZ camera directly. But for this, this is the most common way of setting these cameras up. So this should get you started for a, a network PTZ camera.